This is another little car we have. This is a 1980 Mercury Capri. Now, it's identical to a Mustang, except it's got a domed hood. The reason I'm showing you this car is this is something somebody tried before. Now, back in, in 1979, there's a company called Harmon Moody in Charlotte, North Carolina. They were involved in building race cars for NASCAR and that sort of thing. They've been in business for years and years. And they put together some of their engineers and worked out and built a car that would get uh, like 60 miles a gallon of battery and it was, it was all over the newspapers across America and all of a sudden it just all dried up and died and never heard a thing about it. Now apparently the employees of the company were given a year of severance pay and told that the city of Char uh, Charlotte had condemned the property the plant was on and they would lose their jobs temporarily. They had to build a new plant to build cars in. In the meantime, the story I've been told, and it must be true, is the oil companies bought them out. They weren't going to let this car hit the highways. The oil companies are all interested in Saudi, Saudis one or the other. This little car right here, even though it's uh, over 30, it's 30 years old now, it cranks and runs like a brand new one. Now we don't have the, uh, the regular, they got the low suffer fuel now that don't get quite as good a mileage as it did back then. They said back then it was getting about 60, now it's getting 50 a little better. Now this car right here is a four-cylinder Avco engine. This is an engine that Alice Chambers sold. It was made in Italy. It's a VM Avco engine, AVCO Avco engine. And it's also we got a little diverter valve here. You can run this thing on corn oil. You can run on transmission fluid, hydraulic fluid, uh, kerosene, just about anything that's liquid and flammable for running this car. I took reporters ride in it for the local affiliates for NBC and an affiliate out of Columbus, Georgia for ABC. And they told us these newsreels and these things will be forwarded on to New York offices. And we, we were anticipating to be on 2020 or Dateline. We never saw a thing. You know, I believe that, I just believe personally, I believe the oil companies found out about it and put brakes on it. At the time this was going on, the oil companies had increased their budget. I was told by a man named Dick Throat that, that used to work for oil companies that he had warned them it was about to melt down the whole country in 07. And he pleaded with them. Apparently, instead of listening to him, they fired him. And he was calling me and telling me what was going on. He said that they'd increased their budgets with the networks by about 10 times what they normally paid, the oil industry did. That's how they was buying the press to advertise. Now, they, every dollar a congressman and your senator takes, every dollar they take costs me and you millions. The worst thing is going to cost us our children and grandchildren's future. They may not be in America in the future. Where are they going to live? We have got to stop this pack money. I'm telling you, it's, it's more, it's more, we're more danger from the from, the, from our Congress getting this packed money and more the North Koreans and the uh, Chinese and the terrorists and the uh, uh, Iranians, the whole bit put together. Uh, bird flu and uh, all, uh, all these other pandemics. We're more, we're the American people, the future of America is, is in bigger danger from the pack money. But these cars run fine, they do well. I bought this car from a man named Kegel, one of the nicest men I ever met up in Charlotte, North Carolina. He helped us, he helped me find this car. and. Um, I could tell you could talk this man was talking about it. He had such a such a big ton of pride in his heart talking about this car. He's so excited. And uh, on the phone I talked to one of the guys that helped build a car. And uh, this was just, just proof of the pudding. Now we were building the pickups at the time. But I wanted to see one of these cars and see how it run. So we bought this car in Charlotte and brought it back home. And this car right here, it just absolutely proves to me that this can be done. So they built this car very similar. It's a very similar way they built this car the way we built our pickups. This car right here runs just as smooth as any car on the road. It'll spool the tires taken off if you double clutch it. Runs over 100 miles an hour top end in traffic. It's a, this is a 95 horse force on a turbo diesel. It's got the passing speed of most uh, mid-sized cars with a small V8 and four barrel carburetor. So this thing here will uh, get 50 miles a gallon all day long. Now, if, before we had to use this low suffer diesel, I, I, believe it would get, I believe it would get 60 miles a gallon. I don't think it would be a problem. But imagine, if, if the automobile manufacturers in America or a Moody stayed in business, they hadn't been bought out, whether it was the Saudis or oil industry or oil people that bought them out, if these cars had been on the road, we would have never had to import any oil. And that's, that's the thing that oil companies want to import oil. Back when this uh, meltdown was going on last summer, I was talking to a man that worked at uh, Texas World Music. He, he, he was on the sta 30 stations in seven states, and he told me that three-fourths of oil wells in Oklahoma and Texas and, and uh, Louisiana were not pumping. He said, what they want to do is make it like a shortage. They want to import just as much oil as possible to have to try to drive the price up. And that's just what it was. Not in, the oil companies aren't in the oil business in the oil, oil shortage. This right here is a fine little automobile. This is a fine little automobile. If the American people that have been given an opportunity to drive vehicles like this, we wouldn't need to buy any. We wouldn't need to import any foreign oil. That endangers our military, endangers our future, endangers our safety. And yet, these vehicles right here, you couldn't ask for better running vehicles than these right here. 
our pickup trucks would, would work for the farmers and, and, and the working people. These automobiles right here, when you when you when you build them, the, these same engines would work intermediate sized cars. You go back, we have to go back now that Chevrolet and Chrysler is going bankrupt. We may have to go back and take older vehicles like from the 70s in particular and 80s and take these rear real drive vehicles. And we put we put industrial diesel motors in them. Now you can buy new, uh, you can buy new Kubota engines, for instance, and you can get you can get uh, clutch and bell housing kits in one place, and another place has got the uh, the adapters to fit them to automatic transmissions. You can put them in there, and you have air, you have power steering, you have power brakes. If a uh, mounted fence got control of Chrysler, well, I can only imagine what they'll do. They'll, they'll you'll be riding around something about the size of a 55 gallon trash can with wheels on it. Uh, these cars are bigger and safer, and you can go to the intermediate sized cars too. But, you know, if you have to, we may have to in the future just actually build our cars. But uh, uh, if the alternative is that we just have to put something together for ourselves, maybe that's what we have to do is the, is the American spirit, the American people, pioneer spirit of the people. Anytime something goes through, most people nowadays turn to the politicians for answer. But the politicians aren't the answer, they're the cause. It's the politicians taking the payoff money from the oil companies and the other big giant corporations. Think about NAFTA. Do you know anybody that's a NAFTA? Giant corporations on a NAFTA. NAFTA was used to wipe out thousands of small businesses across America and many, many small towns across America have lost what little employment they had to turn into tumbleweed towns. All this was because of, of greed of a few corporations. And I'm not down on all corporations. Most corporations are good. They provide goods and services, and provide un they provide employment, profit, and job opportunities, and they pay taxes, and they're good neighbors. There's just a handful of them that's got too big and all companies are, are, are typical of this, this sort of thing. But we have got to stop the pack money going to senators and congressmen. Every dollar they take costs us a million. It may cost us more than that. It may cost us our, 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 our nation. And as long as they get this big fat money, they couldn't care less. The American people's got to rise up and we've got to say, no, we've got to cut out the pack money. Every dollar they get cuts our throat. We got to stand up and tell these politicians we want to do what we want to do. One thing I'd suggest we cut these salaries down for these senators and congressmen and governors and all these people across America to hundred thousand dollars. If you don't pay them a hundred thousand dollars, you're gonna get farmers, you're gonna get school teachers, you get librarians, you get mechanics, you get welders, you get salesmen, you get people all across, uh, 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 a better, I believe, a more idealistic uh, great people that's everyday working folks. That's what we need to have in Congress representatives. We're sending a bunch of gold digger billionaires up there, or multi-millionaires, they get to be billionaires later, I guess, and, and to represent us. These people can't live on $100,000 a year, they can't live on $200,000 a year, they got to have about a million dollars a year or more, and they take it in pack money. And uh, if we had just everyday people running our running our government, we'd be a lot better off. We'd have much, these people have much, uh, they got more consideration for everyday people. But uh, until this is done, I don't know what we're going to do.